I just always felt that I was going to go back to Australia. So there was never that sort of rite of passage. There was never that feeling of, well, this is a decision that we are going to leave Australia and never go back. I think what I really feel very sad about and perhaps maybe poignant things that I paint about, maybe my paintings often are quite poignant, is that loss of family, the loss of my grandmother who I never saw again, who was, I was very, very close to, and she more or less brought me up as a child. And then my cousins, who, who were like my sisters, who grew up and when I next saw them, they were like 23, and you know, I never saw my second father again, who I adored. When you are in another country, it's almost like you detach yourself. You have this amazing ability as a human being to detach yourself from the real sense of feeling and you often do transpose it into a painting. The painting becomes a sublimation, if you like, for really going into those dark places or those sad places, I think. It becomes sort of crutch. I'm not saying it's cathartic, but there is a certain sense of catharsis in, in painting, I think. You have to find a raison d'etre, if you like. My family have always been artistic and creative. My parents had a theatre and they had, you know, stage sets that they would be painting. My stepfather would always whiz up something and paint it and do things. So it was a, a sort of creative thing that you would all, almost automatically do, which was it sort of in your blood. It was just, I just always felt that I was going to be a painter. I was born in Australia. My real father, my, my Welsh father, who was a surgeon, uh, my, my mother left him when I was about two. My second father was a theatre director, much older than my mother actually. And they started the theatre together in an old bakehouse they converted, an 150-seater. And they'd put on plays there. And the theatre was called The Muse. And I remember going to the plays when I was little, I'd be watching the rehearsals and things. So it was very much, they were very preoccupied with um, their theatre, but they also taught art in the day, both my parents, to subsidise the theatre because they weren't Arts Council grants then, so they had to subsidise their own theatre which they did in the evening. So their life was very preoccupied with their activities, if you like. So I would stay often with my cousins, or I'd stay with Zianka Fantalova, who was this Czechoslovakian woman who'd survived Auschwitz. So I saw a completely different life because we lived in a gold miner's house. My parents were quite romantic, and we lived in a gold miner's house in the middle of the Australian bush in Kangaroo Ground with kerosene lights. It was in the middle of about 18 acres, a bit like here, really, 18 acres. So it was a country childhood, and it was uh, quite romantic, really. And then we'd drive down to the theatre at night. After my mother played Nora in a doll's house, she decided to go to England, go to London, to make her name, really, in the theatre. And she left my second father, on the, and we went on the Oriana, and she took me on the Oriana. And we came to London in the worst, worst winter ever. It was minus something and the snow was two foot thick. It was 1962, 63. The first experience of an English accent I heard was the taxi driver who said to my mother when she said, that seems very expensive. If you don't like it, lady, you can get out. You know, that was our first words that we had from somebody, which wasn't, didn't bode well. And then we went to the house where we went to stay. It was all arranged that we were to stay. And this woman put the window up and she said, there's been a terrible mistake. Um, I'm sorry, I don't know, you were led to believe that you could stay here, but you can't. Um, come in and I'll give you an omelette and uh, we'll look for a hotel. And we went and stayed in a hotel and I remember my mother crying. And it was, it was quite um, a bad start really to London. And my mother sold the return ticket to hitch with me around Europe on the autostrada with two sleeping bags. And we went to Greece, um, London, uh, Italy, but she took me to all the wonderful galleries that there were, you know, like the Giottos in Padua and um, the Sistine Chapel and the Uffizi Museum in Florence. So I remember seeing all those exhibitions and, um, and then going to Sifnos, a Greek island, and sleeping on the beach, which was lovely. I loved Greece. She was quite a, an avant-garde bohemian, my mother, you could say, which would fit in very nicely with um, Charleston. And uh, a risk taker and very brave, really. I mean, you know, she really sort of decided that 
the theatre was very important to her and to fulfil herself. And I think that as a role model, that, has what I, that is what I have also taken on board. Except I've been sort of more motherly, I think. I thought, well, you know, there's a bit more of a sort of um, a need for the children to have more of a motherly presence. I have painted about her in various stages of having her stroke. It's sort of coming to terms with her bewilderment, if you like, because in a way she is bewildered. She is just as bewildered by what has happened to her. How did this happen? It's so sudden, you see, a stroke just happens like that. So the relationship now is one of a tenderness, really. I feel enormously tender towards her.